interview section of today's webinar. Today is our 19th webinar of the series and we are overjoyed to have with us uh, Dr. Niranjan Vaishak join us from Louisiana State University, USA. Uh, sir, it's uh, wonderful to have you here. And um, it was a, a wonderful presentation and uh, your talk was appreciated by so many people who were watching uh, the chat uh, in YouTube. Uh, sir, uh, we would uh, love to know more about you. And um, this, is, this section is all about that, to know more about the speaker. And uh, we are very interested to know how you uh, build your career. Uh, can you, could you please tell us about your journey so far as a plant scientist? Okay, um, you know, I, I do, it's um, 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 a liberty said that, you know, I did my undergrad um, in, in Orisha University of Agriculture Technology. It's in the Eastern part of India. Um, let me tell you that um, if, you, if you really, some of you may not be aware, um, Orisha, the name actually comes from Orisha. Okay, and that's, that's the etiology of the name Orisha. So, because um, there are, of course, um, difference in the opinion that um, rice, um, the primary center of origin, uh, is actually Jaipur. That's actually a, a small city in, in Orissa. And uh, until, so then, uh, you know, of course, there is a conflicting um, uh, report from the, uh, the Chinese counterpart. So, that's the reason they say like Asia and Asia Minor as the center of origin. They don't say the center of origin, mm -hmm. the center of maximum right. diversity of Okay, so I grew up actually in 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 a in a rice belt. You know, in Orissa, of course, um, we eat almost. I mean, every day two times rice. Mm. <laughs> uh, I would not go to the bed uh, without rice uh, in the night for sure. Uh, <laughs> so so that's how Im important rice to us, right? And um, and I grew up. Um, my father was a small scale farmer, um, you know, so we, we go help um, in the field whenever it is needed. And um, during the, those days, um, we, we used to compete with our siblings or our neighbors, you know, because the rice were not very developed varieties, like the improved varieties. So most mm -hmm. of the um, panicles will break also. So okay. what happens, because and this is not like mechanical harvesting. So I'm mm -hmm. talking about uh, maybe in, 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 in 1970s, you know. So the, they were still using a lot of um, those land races or those um, that time so-called improved varieties. And then we will go after it is harvested, the field will have a lot of uh, broken panicles, you know. So mm -hmm. we'll go with a basket and then whoever can fill that basket and comes home gets some money from the parents, you know. So, so that's how, that was actually our after school um, kind of uh, running to after school and run to the field um, during the November, December time. So, so you know, it's not that uh, I'm not going to tell like, you know, from the childhood I had the interest. No, I really wanted to be a doctor, a human doctor. Okay, so after my um, higher secondary, I wanted to be a human doctor, but I was in the waiting list. I'm still waiting, um, but <laughs> since <laughs> I, I could not make the cut while waiting, <laughs> so so what I did is I I went to the agriculture streamline, and my father looked at me. He said, "Are you really going to put a plow in your shoulder and then plow the land because you are going to study agriculture?" I said, "No, no, no, no. That's not really how about how this is." Okay. You know? <laughs> We'll be studying about a lot of things about agriculture and soil science. We'll be studying about the plant varieties. Mm -hmm. And then, so I became very, very interested in genetics. And that credit actually should go to Dr. Chitaranjan Kole. Uh, he is my master advisor, but um, he was my teacher um, of genetics and plant breeding in undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just I just cannot imagine the way or I, I, I would try to emulate him the way he teaches is probably the best teacher that I have actually um, come across in my life uh, as far as genetics and breeding is concerned. So I became more and more interested after his classes and interacting with him. So I'm one of those few ones that time that got involved in doing research as an undergraduate student. I know this is a common trend here, um, but during that time um, in 1980s or 86 or 83, you know seven so i was looking at working with him in the field 
you know he was doing some and the citronella lemon grass uh, thing and then he would take me to the field and just select so so that is how i developed my interest in research that's the first stage that i developed my interest in research and uh, moving on to my masters i worked again with him for my master uh, thesis um, although so i started to work on tissue culture because tissue culture was the biotechnology that time you know mm-hmm. so if you know and also it's more you know kind of fancy because you are staying in a in an air conditioned room you know so <laughs> you consider yourself as an elite group of people students you know you are you are in air conditioned room because tissue culture has to be in the air conditioning you know so everything so that's the reason um, anyhow it's not, that was not the reason that i was interested but i was interested in tissue culture because that was the biotechnology emerging biotechnology you know so i moved i i actually uh, stepped into the tissue culture process uh, i started working tissue culture of first thing was with the paper mint you know and that was my first tissue culture adventure because our idea was that time we were still kind of brainstorming what to do what, what is the tissue culture to do because my university doesn't have a tissue culture facility that time so um dr kole uh, made a connection with a scientist at regional plant resource center uh, in bhubaneswar india mm-hmm. and where i went and then they had a tissue culture facility so he just thought like you know dr kol has a tremendous uh, foresight in this he said maybe we should produce menthol in in the i mean menthol is a secondary uh, metabolite right so um, we'll produce menthol in tissue culture medium you know like in bioreactor small scale bioreactor in mm. so that is when i started to work with uh, menthol paper mint but then after a couple of months i thought it was a very difficult um, journey for me because i'm studying in one university and then going to another place and there was you know that time we did not have public transport that um, that good and i did not have so i have to go by bike or, so then one day um, i told that you know i don't think that uh, it is really a good idea and or i can do much over there and then this resources were limited so i didn't have money i was just getting enough money scholarship to 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 pay for myself so he kind he said you know i can support some of this supplies so that's okay i still remember now i, I went to one of my university staff um, this is a funny incident but i went to get some sucrose so so the technique well you know he had one bottle of sucrose probably maybe mm-hmm. i don't know how old so he just took out actually a paper like a newspaper piece and then gave me i said no no i'm not asking this sugar for tea you know i'm asking for preparing some media so i need some 30 gram he said what 30 gram no 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 that's not possible there are other students also so it's not possible so that's how we we had to grow up so so i told to dr kole that this is kind of tough and when i am going to that institute they are not very open obviously because everybody is rest- limited with their resources so um, he said okay let's just think and then you know maybe but i want you to do tissue culture though, because that's one area that he was deficient with so he wanted to make the team complete by me making the tissue culture progress you know progress in tissue culture so then we somehow talking then we decided that you know this is a crop that i had interest that latherus called latherus mm-hmm. it's a um, latherus sativus you know it's called chickling pea uh, wedge pea and it has it's it's called a poor man's legume it has very high nutritional value um very high protein and mm-hmm. very very uh, very um uh, rough crop like it can grow in very marginal um soil with very limited or um, um attention towards nutrition and all these things so uh, even water so i thought like you know this is the crop which is banned because of the neuro uh, toxin that it produces so even though you have to you have to re, you have to eat for 17 years to develop that paralysis symptom but still it was banned by the government of india that it is not uh, for human consumption because um, it does have that um, it's called like boa beta uh, oxalyl beta n oxalyl amino acid so alanine um, amino acid so it's called boa or dim boa and that particular neurotoxin was being produced so we thought like we can produce some somaclonal variants that could have less of those that neurotoxin you know so that was our idea so i started and uh, doing tissue culture of latherus 
And believe me, the tissue culture of legumes are definitely difficult and during that time. So, um, and I know, I know one scientist, Dr. Srinivasan at um, Indian Agriculture Research Institute working with Chichbi, and he was having terrible time too. So he said, you know, legume tissue culture is very, very tough. And we, you know, obviously I, I had tough time. So I worked actually in one university, Uttal University. Um, I used their facility and then there was good uh, communication of the city bus, uh, town bus we call. So then I could go and slowly Dr. Kole saw my progress and became happy. So he kind of landed his scooter to go there, you know, so that I can save more time um, by going there. So that's how actually I started into my journey into tissue culture. Okay, and then after I graduated with my master's, I really wanted to continue with Dr. Kole for my PhD, but he went on to Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, and then he stayed there forever, um, almost like four or five years, you know, so I was waiting for him. And then I decided that, you know, I need to move on. So I actually, rice is not new to me, and there was actually a research um, scholar position open at uh, Central Rice Research Institute in Katak. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually our Indian Rice Premier Institute, or now it's called National Rice Research Institute. Mm -hmm. So my supervisor then, Dr. Jijan Rao, who actually returned from Texas A&M and was establishing an anthroculture program. You know? So, and then that position was there, and every time I pass by that institute, I always think that I should work here. You know, so, and there was this advertisement, and then I met with Dr. Jijan Rao, even that advertisement was not there, I mean, uh, out yet. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a couple of friends working there in breeding and then I visited them and then they took me and then they said, oh, sir, he has some experience in tissue culture. He said, okay, we have some position coming in maybe. So, you know, then I applied and I got it. And that's how I actually changed my whole perspective of, uh, you know, the crops. So I, I decided that, no, I will be sticking to rice. You know, so and then I did a lot of anthroculture work with him. We did very, very significant progress with anthroculture, double haploid, like we produce like hundreds of and double haploid. And Dr. Jizen Rao, and that was actually carried by my successors in his lab. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to even develop some varieties from those, um, you know, those double haploids. But I got tired because I am a person who always wants to learn and ever learning person I am now. I mean, I cannot just imagine that I can be stuck in some time and then I don't read or I don't do something. Even now also, I'm a hands-on person. You know, I, I still go to the lab and then do whenever it is needed or whenever I would like to. So, mm -hmm. so I'm more a hands-on. And I said two years later, I told Dr. Rao, sir, this is too much. You know, this is like more becoming more like um, uh, monotonous, mundane. So mm -hmm. I really want to do something because the idea was to develop some protoplast derived transgenics. Mm -hmm. And that was the project. Uh, where is that? He said, oh, well, you know, we don't have the facilities here to have the protoplast uh, and then you know, we don't have an inverted microscope and all these things. But there was a Rockefeller Foundation grant actually during that time. Rockefeller was pouring a lot of money for prioritizing rice biotechnology in Asia, you know. So um, that was actually, so a lot of money were there, but uh, we don't know, at least in my lab, there was not a lot of money that we didn't have any microscope. So uh, I owe to Dr. Rao this, that because of him, I got the opportunity to see outside of India. So it was mm -hmm. one conference in, in Delhi. Um, it is called National Rice Biotechnology Network. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a meeting, it was sponsored by the Rockefeller Foundation. So basically in that place, all the, uh, the, the PI, the principal investigators that have been funded by the Rockefeller Foundation, they will be presenting their results. You know? So that is where Dr. Rao allowed me to present my work. And then uh, I got, and Dr. Rao actually, because he was a Rockefeller Foundation postdoc at Texas A&M. So he connected me to Dr. John O'Toole, uh, he was actually the coordinator of Rockefeller Foundation for the South and Southeast Asia, you know. So Dr. Rao told to John that, um, John, you know, this guy has done this work and John O'Toole has already heard me. And then during the lunch time, he, he kind of tapped on my shoulder and then I said like, okay, who is that? Because I was afraid that the last night, maybe I, I drank a little bit more. So maybe <laughs> he's telling me something. So, you know, we were, this is, this is the truth. As you know, we were, we were 
in, in our is uh, we don't have access to a lot of good things and then when in delhi we saw like a bunch of those uh, things and we are very young so then i said you know, somebody is trying to tell me something you know so and then i looked and then a tall man like john otul he was so he said young man what is your next plan then i said no i'm going to attend to some some talks and he said no 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 i'm talking about what is your next plan in your career what you want to do and i said oh then i didn't know he is john otul so i looked at his desk i said john otul rockefeller foundation so i said okay and then dr rao had given me an um, hint that i would be talking to john so he may talk to you you know so but i don't know when and that's when actually my uh, my life changed because he said so what's what's next i said well you know i'm kind of tired with this anthroculture i'm thinking to do some more transgenic work and then um, he said um, so do you know where i said we don't have that facility so i don't know where he said do you know there is a fellowship uh, given by the rockefeller foundation uh, i said no he said okay go back and then see in the back side of they used to have a rice biotechnology quarterly magazine mm-hmm. by the rockefeller foundation so go back and then the last phase of that will be a form fill that one out and mm-hmm. then you know apply so that was that was it so i did go and i applied with my with my this thing because there was no internet um or uh, nothing for that matter um, i think the whole cri had only one computer that uh, people some people used to use for something uh, maybe and then um, so when i sent it and then i sent my my cv so called cv uh, in my hand Because uh-huh. handwritten uh, in my handwritten no it's not cv my handwritten my cv was typed by dr rao but i had my research accomplishment okay. research accomplishment what okay. i have done so far so i wrote it in my hand okay. and john okay. otul visited so this was in november 1996 john okay. otul visited crri in in april of 2000 um, april of 1997 okay. so he said um, young man i have Uh, i am interviewing now the candidates of um, in you know in asia so you are one of those 60 or 70 so i would like to talk to you sometime after lunch or during the lunch time so we learned that he is a vegetarian so i am a vegetarian so we were in the same table because um, in the lunch time so um, then he he said and he opened his laptop he said have you this seen this form online i said online uh, no the, <laughs> no he said that's very strange and he looked showed to the people my handwritten that paper you know this guy has applied to me in a handwritten thing so anyway he took my interview he asked me bunch of questions about what i plan to do in life or whatever and then he he kind of said like okay um that was in the lunch time in the evening time before the social he said me okay um you know i have forwarded your because while he was talking to me he was doing something on his laptop so he said like he is filling out some forms so and he said i have forwarded you your case to to the main office in new york in uh, rockefeller uh, it's new york so and that time gary tonison was there so he said gary tonison is here so i i will talk to him and then you know you you tell me where you want to go mm-hmm. so i said immediately i said here because you know i'm working mm-hmm. with rice mm-hmm. and uh, no better place than iri for working in rice and i had very little outlook i really didn't know that rice is also being grown in us um, you know not much so um, didn't do those kind of um, sources much or something uh, i know research is going on but i don't know that rice is really grown in this scale or you know so then he said why iri and i said well iri is Premier Rice Institute, and then it is in Asia. It's close by to India, and then you know, as um, an introvert person like me, so I don't want to go too far. Much <laughs> and Dr. Gata is a pioneer during that time, you know. So mm. having come with this first protoplast transgenic fertile rice, and then mm. a lot of accolades for that one. So I said that would be an opportunity for me to work with him, you know. So then he said, okay. um and dr datta was there there was another meeting immediately following the nrbn called the crop science congress and so the crop science congress was in actually science um in the in the bigan bhavan mm-hmm. so that was just immediately after that nrbn meeting so that is when i met with dr datta 
then um, okay. and then john otter um, must have talked to him and then um, then dr datta said okay so um, you want to do phd with protoplast um, transgenics i said yes and then um, then i said okay just write down a small kind of a proposal you know two page or something and then send it to me and then um, you know so that was like the life changer for me so and then the rest you know i i got the fellowship i went in november 1997 to iri and then after that i have not looked back and then i did um, i stayed there quite a bit of time uh, close to i think i think 6 year 8 9 months i stayed with him and mm-hmm. different projects you know first i did my phd in rice in agriculture double haploid transgenics um, mm-hmm. and uh, both biologic and agrobacterium was just starting mm-hmm. you know in rice mm-hmm. um, but if you look at actually the agrobacterium publications i think the one uh, in theoretical applied genetics with uh, karobimm as the first author that was actually the first rice agrobacterium transformation paper right so agrobacterium has been in several other crops but not in rice per se so and then we well, dr datta was not actually a firm believer of agrobacterium so um, i remember him vividly saying when i showed my 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 results to him he said that's ah, contamination so <laughs> so and then um, you know i we so then i told to madam how to convince him madam said no 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 you know we have this before so madam had a transgenic karabi madam had a transgenic with um, with a maintenance line with agrobacterium and when i had him little bit longer larger scale you know so dr datta said no this is not possible you know because uh, he was thinking pcr is contamination Th- because it is like that he's in from that old school thought that time you know so and it's nice because something to accept fast you need to really have a good bit of scrutiny which he was mm-hmm. doing so it's nothing wrong in that so he was mm-hmm. trying to be more scrutinizing and the results to convince him that yes it is working but once he was convinced then there is nothing looking back he completed he stopped uh, protoplast you know and um, mostly biologic still continued because there are still some recalcitrant varieties you know and agrobacterium was just starting so um, basically karabimm started with agrobacterium with a, with a person from switzerland i think stena nikolova i cannot pronounce her name i should not be doing wrong to her name but um, justice to her name <laughs> so so um, after my results um, then she also got more and more convinced than we put together the paper and then that came out and that's actually one of the first papers of agrobacterium successful agrobacterium transformation with rice you know so so yes after that i i was very lucky to work in the golden rice project you know and um, i'm i'm also one of those uh, older persons to be involved with dr datta and that group to work with golden rice and after that a lot of uh, students um, joined and then you know went uh, bigger scale uh, i still cannot imagine that i would learn hplc i had to go to india he sent me to india for a week to learn hplc to analyze the the, the golden rice um, you know and then i went to national institute of nutrition dr shivu kumar allowed me to i mean to stay one week there and mm-hmm. then i came back and then we had a water machine and then dr datta had a full time person just to do um, you know screening of the the transgenics or the varieties for mm-hmm. for for not only beta carotene but also for some other nutritional traits you know so that is where my eerie and then when i just kind of thought like you know it is time for me to move on you know to to look a little bit different because you know transgenic as a technology i was enjoying with the different traits mm. but um, me as a person i am always um, looking forward to more independent thinking also and mm-hmm. also doing more of molecular biology stuff you know um, i do it a lot of uh, construct making in dr datta's lab a lot of southern um, western northern but uh, something to think more into the discovery platform that was my idea too so we did some work with the uh, abiotic stress drip genes um, in his lab and then you know and we moved on um, but then when when i came here i joined actually the coastal plants program and the molecular program of the coastal plants um, group was being led by dr suvadi 
Uh, mm -hmm. So I joined in there, but the objective was actually to look at the genetic diversity of this, you know. And I said, hold on, I'm, I mean, I will do that, but that's not something a postdoc job, you know. So I would, I would be rather more looking into why this allophyte or maybe cloning some genes from this allophyte and then um, doing for some stress resistance, you know, uh, abiotic stress resistance, particularly because, you know, where we come from or I come from, like in Eastern India, uh, most of our land is actually rain fed because our farmers are very small or marginal scale farmers. You know? They do not have the facility to actually have mechanized farming and then also mm -hmm. irrigating as and when right, right. So um, most of our land is just rain fed. You just leave it to the rain god. So if it is too much rain, there is flooding in the rain fed lowland. If it is no rain, then in the upland it is drought. Right, mm -hmm. so that's how we are. We have grown up with Eastern, uh, I mean, East India, and that's the same thing with Bangladesh and other, you know, Asian mm -hmm. countries right. and uh, some other countries. So, and then now more and more we. So I was always thinking of abiotic stress in my mind to do. Um, I was lucky. I was in uh, just contributing a very minor or meager to to the golden rice project, but that was in the very primitive days of where we are talking about 1.6 microgram and we are very happy because the original was 0.6, you know? But right. now we are talking about 37 microgram, looking like carrot. So mm. so that's an evolution. That's an evol evol ever evolving process. That's, that's okay. So I just uh, tried to focus more on abiotic stress when I came here in Louisiana State University. And you know, now that Louisiana is one of the major rice producing states in the United States, you know? So I'm very lucky to be here to, at LSU. And then um, I started working as a postdoc for a couple of years, then moved on as a, a non-tenure uh, faculty uh, mm -hmm. to have my independent program. You know, so, and that's when actually I was lucky to collaborate with people like Andy Pereira and then some others to, to have some funding to, to, to do full scale. And then I recruited my first postdoc, um, uh, Ramana. Uh, mm -hmm. who stayed with me for some time. In between, he went for a year to ICGB and then he came back again. So, you know, so that is, that is, that is how actually I built off my lab over here. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there is nothing looking back, you know. So, and then, you know, obviously, um, when I was working with rice, then there was this opportunity for sugarcane. Uh, we had mm -hmm. a sugarcane scientist who moved on as a full-time sugarcane breeder. So okay. I actually tried to take that, or I kind of was given to take that challenge um, because of a position thing, because I was a non-tenure, so I was made a tenure track uh, in 2013. And then my focus was uh, shifted uh, to some extent to sugarcane, so you know, so I, I focus, my focus is more on sugarcane, some in rice, and then also helping a little bit the other breeding programs, mostly helping with their students like the wheat breeding program of uh, Steve Harrison, or, um, and, and collaborating with other um, scientists and maybe a little bit on cotton and corn, so, mm -hmm. and sweet potato, but, but most focus is on, on sugarcane and also on rice, you know? So that's why sugarcane is a very challenging crop in terms of genetics. Um, you all know probably it's very complex. We still do not have a genome um, sequence available, genome draft available um, for the cultivated varieties, um, although there has been one, um, monoploid genome. So, but then, you know, I enjoy um, working more in challenging areas. So, and then, you know, I'm lucky that I am here and then I have the opportunity to work with these important uh, crops that are very, very, very key to the state economy and to the people of Louisiana. And, and these are global crops, you know, so, so, yes. so yeah. I don't know if I really answered to your question. This oh, is definitely. Oh, it was wonderful to hear your it's what a story. <laughs> and it's so uh, nice to hear that you are always thinking about the farmers at home. Whatever you're doing, you're thinking about the farmers, how to help them, how your research will help them, the farmers, you know. So it's amazing to hear. Uh, sir, uh, I'm moving on to the next question. Um, along with uh, food security, what are your thoughts on nutritional security? I mean, there is no second thought on that. A nutritional security must be achieved, you know, because um, we know very well um, a lot of, lot of um, 
people on earth uh, even though they have enough food but they are malnourished by nutrition mm -hmm. so uh, you know um, take the example of vitamin a for example um, mm -hmm. there are areas you know so that is where i'm i'm i know i'm i'm on air but um, i must tell that i if i have enough money to eat i should not actually recommend what a person who does not have enough money to eat i would let him eat what choose whatever he wants to eat okay so and that this is actually a, uh, this is i would follow that because if i know something is scientifically right i will eat no matter how it has been developed okay so i know a lot of nutritional security for example vitamin a there is no rice that has vitamin a more vitamin a so how do you integrate uh, vitamin a traits or those three genes uh, into rice the genetic engineering is the only way right. right so so that is why i'm saying like there are we should not be thinking about the methodology unless and otherwise there is some serious repercussion of that product so mm -hmm. you should select but yes coming back to your question iron beta carotene or vitamin a so, and then um, zinc you know now how important zinc is right we are talking a lot about zinc because of the coronavirus yes, so the um, yes. right so you you supplement uh, your food with zinc or taking more zinc uh, supplemented food so our zinc uh, rich food so there is no second thought about the nutritional security it's just only food security is two part one at the productivity size and the other one is the nutrition side so they have, they have to go hand in hand mm -hmm. you know Yeah, research must continue on this i mean the nutritional security and i like that idea of phytonutraceuticals you know like uh, producing uh, the the nutrients uh, for example there used to be a, there is a company ventria bioscience uh, produces human lactoferrin in actually in, in rice seed you know right. and uh, talk about the 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 um not only just nutraceutical but also the the the, the vaccines or different um, uh, you know um, medicinal plants mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. uh, not the medicinal plants per se but like I, i'm trying to quote the work of henry daniel from from pennsylvania university of pennsylvania you know is producing um, insulin in lettuce plants you know so you just you just take the lettuce powders the leaf powders that is he is encapsulating them and then you take them and then you have your insulin dose so this is this is an area that it has to continue i mean it has to go and then there has to be funding um, because it is very important it's very very important mal malnutrition nutritional deficiency uh, is important for the for the human health hmm. and um, in we all know human health is very important yeah definitely Okay, sir. According to you, uh, which sectors of plant science research will prosper in the near future? Undoubtedly, you all knew. We are all excited that uh, the scientist uh, in gene editing, um, you know, that pioneered gene editing, got the Nobel Prize, um, deservedly so. So, gene editing is definitely going to be um, very, very um, routine now. Mm -hmm. I mean. more than ever it is going on but then mm -hmm. you know it it is actually the buzz thing for mm -hmm. sure um wherever it is possible that would be that would be there uh, coming back to for example rice there are several several different um, areas i i touch little bit for example waterfront right so you definitely want to go for growing crops in minimal water mm -hmm. i mean just like i'm mimicking the the slogan that they put it in i don't know if it is the one who started this like um, crop or drop you know so so you need to have you need to have um, crop growth uh, per drop of water so right. water is very precious now mm -hmm. uh, as i said in some places we have more water but the quality of the water is bad mm -hmm. so so it is it's not just an abundance of water it's just the quality of the water also so mm -hmm. uh, we need to develop um, and these are going to be worsening with the climate change and climate mm -hmm. change is something that just cannot be stopped um, yes outrightly you know it is an ever going process yes we are going to have less water yes in the future uh, we will have less and less water and also mm -hmm. the, the the heat tolerance for example yes. 
Hmm. Night temperatures are increasing, hmm. and we all know the repercussion of uh, high night temperature on the crop um, yield hmm. Uh, hmm. growth. Uh, so, so those are some of the areas um, that I know. For example, um, you know, yes, gene editing is definitely going to be a very very big area in the next decade or so. Hmm. You know, and you would see more and more products becoming uh, available. Um, I mean, developed by uh, and gene editing. Gene editing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last question for today: uh, What would your words of advice be to the new research fellows? Well, I'm also still new. <laughs> so uh, there is no advice. I think these are all known. Everybody would tell you the same things, but in a different way. I have a 3D approach, both for research and also for the youngsters. For research, we have a 3D approach, right? We develop, we deploy, and we disseminate. We develop a technology. Mm -hmm. We deploy the technology to, to our product development, whatever mm -hmm. product that would be. And then we disseminate our results to the, to the public, be it a scientific community or the farmers or the growers or you know, producers. Or for the researchers per se, you know, this is for the research, but the researchers per se, and for the youngsters are we alive. I mean, I'm, I'm considered that means as old now. Um, no, no, I, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just mm. telling that. So anyway, <laughs> for all those who are in the research aspirations uh, line, that you know, again the 3D approach, uh, a drive, and a determination, and a devotion. So okay. you you have to have a drive. Mm. I have to do that. And I want to do that. It's not like, you know, and then that doesn't just help because, you know, I want to be a doctor, but I couldn't get into through that, um, you know, um, waiting list. But I went to the agriculture, but I didn't really persist on, on staying one more year and maybe preparing better and then go for that, you know. So even though I had a drive to be a doctor, but I could not. I'm a plant doctor. I'm kind of. Oh, yeah, definitely plant doctor. Definitely. So, definitely. So, Good one. Yes, a great okay. one. So. Um, but then you need to have that determination. Mm. You don't want to give up at any time, you know? So that is very important. You first develop a drive, then you actually determine yourself that, no, I want to really do that. Mm. And then you have to devote time. You cannot expect actually a 8 to 4.30 job for research. Research is not a job. It's a passion. It's actually what you really wanted to do, right? So mm -hmm. it is not a eight to four thirty paying job that you you just do it and then go. You have to have that passion. So mm -hmm. that is what I'm calling like devotion. You have to devote yourself to that work that you are doing, and then mm -hmm. only you can do the justice. You know, it the the success is not just what other people see it. It's good if it's something is other people perceive it, but the success is what actually you introspect yourself at the end of the day. You know, did I actually do something to make myself happy? Is it really worth doing? Or did, am I doing in the going in the right direction? So hmm. never give up. We all have the saying, we know that perseverance prevails. Hmm. Persist on something, your persistence will prevail one day. Right. Not today, but it will prevent someday. Okay, so I can tell you, coming from a place, I, I told this one to one of my uh, my uh, administrative staff, and then she was laughing with something different. That I said, I came from a place where we didn't have electricity until I was four years old. And she could not just comprehend that how life, how was your life then? So how did you go to restrooms or something like that? You know, so how did you take bath or something like that? So, so these are some of the things. But I am so blessed. Um, I'm so blessed um, and that way and then privileged um, mm -hmm. that you know I am here um, mm -hmm. that I am now. And uh, but it is because probably you know all of the well wishers like Dr. Koleb and my teachers and everybody who were with me that contributed to my success. You know, and then Dr. Rao, for whom mm -hmm. actually I came out of India, and then I, believe me, I never wanted to come to US in the beginning <laughs> because I thought you know, I had a very, very low outlook. I was very bad in geography. I did not know much about this. I thought, like, you know, 
i'm a vegetarian i cannot just stand people you know having or you know eating some beef or pork or meat or something so but here i am you know <laughs> so so this is how you you evolve so you have that drive and your determination and then you devote yourself and you will evolve the process and then you will finally get where you are you know and we all cannot just achieve everything that we want but we achieve something then we should be happy and be happy right anyway yeah, right. to what you have because just mm-hmm. consider think about the people who don't have you right. know mm-hmm. like you know nowadays a lot of um, this whatsapp messages you know looking at glass mm-hmm. half empty look at the glass with perspective half, right? yes perspective. Mm-hmm. so that's right. yeah so again like you know these are the 3d approach i all i awesome I, awesome, awesome. Okay. Oh, the way you speak is amazing sir <laughs> i'm just a big it's fan just, of yours <laughs> <laughs> thank you it's just from my experience so you know <laughs> just um, right from my heart so and uh, so much so many things to learn from your talk and in so many different levels it was such I know, I, insightful I, I, yeah i realized that there are a lot of students so i hope i did not miss or you know them uh, in during this um, uh, you know, that's that's probably typical for a laboratory researcher i don't know no i'm sure you have uh, you know motivated motivated so, so many people yeah. no many many would be really motivated all our students and uh, you know researchers i'm sure and we have so many positive feedbacks also uh, so uh, so and let's uh, end this uh, interview session and let's go back to shuvo let's see what he has to say all right oh.